So I know he will be here any minute. Awesome. Very good. In the meantime, we are going to get ourselves set up. Um, we have a super special guest today, one of my friends. His name is David Hobbs, and he is on track to build a 20000 per month passive income portfolio. So I'm going to, uh, you know, be nosy <laughs> tonight, and you all get to be nosy as well. And, and we're all kind of in this frame of thought of how do we retire and um, the way that we do that, the path to that is through cash flow. So Tawana and I have been working on a an ebook, which we have, uh, the10kproject.com forward slash freedom, the10kproject.com forward slash freedom. So you're able to go and pick that up and we're going to wait for our guests to come in. Oh, he's actually here. So let me bring him up here. And then Tawana, what I'm going to do is um, start the recording and have you introduce the 10K project while David, let's see here. I thought I had promoted him. See if you're able to do it. His name is David Hobbs. Okay. Oh, oh no, okay. here he comes. Coming over now. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm going to also get the codes for the, um, the specials as well. So if you'll just introduce, I'm going to get off video for a second while I get Wonderful. Started. Welcome, David. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for everyone, uh, to everyone for joining us this evening. We are the 10K Project. We are the largest community of investors. And we're super excited to share this evening uh, some more knowledge that we have brought out an amazing gentleman in to share with us. Um, as you all know, for those of you who are members and who have joined us week after week, you know, we are a community of investors who are learning uh, ways to build wealth. And we primarily do that via equity crowdfunding. Uh, we invest in entrepreneurs who are raising capital via that mechanism of capital raising. But we also learn about other ways to build wealth. And so this evening, we're going to expose you to yet another way uh, to grow those portfolios and try to retire and build generational wealth. I always like to say we are trying to make generational wealth more than just a slogan on a t-shirt. Uh, we want it to be real and in person uh, in our lives. So David, thank you so much. We're so happy that you could join us this evening. Cherie is getting us all set up and streaming and sharing us in all the places. Our community members are putting their city and states in the chat so that we can see uh, what part of the country they're joining us from. So we're super happy to have them here. To anyone joining us for the very first time, welcome. Uh, we th are so grateful that you took the time to come hang out with us. Uh, we are firm believers that there is nothing more valuable than time. And the fact that all of you are spending a little bit with us this evening, we are very, very grateful. So if you're new to the 10K Project, please visit our website at the10kproject.com. Uh, right now, we've got some specials going on for membership. Cherie's going to put some of those specials in the chat. But if you want to join membership, uh, we have a special going on right now where membership is $200 off. It's marked down from $300. If you use code HOLIDAY MEMBERSHIP, you can get an annual membership for just $100. And I promise you, it is well worth $100 a year. Um, if there are members in the chat, please share your thoughts about that discount price. I'm sure many of you are like, I wish that discount code was available when I joined. <laughs> but it is our holiday discount code. We also have an amazing relationship with a Black-owned financial um, firm called Freeman Capital. Uh, where we offer um, financial planning, six months of financial planning, unlimited touch points, uh, where you walk away with a really good wealth plan for your future. And that um, package is discounted $297 using holiday code or using the discount code holiday wealth. We also recently hosted a grant masterclass that blew the roof off this joint. And <laughs> It was absolutely amazing. We had the amazing Beverly Burgess in the house, 40 plus years of experience with grant research, writing, hiring, all the things. She, she came and she 
really, really educated us on how to get grants for our businesses. And so we're giving $50 off of that uh, masterclass using the code holiday grants. So again, the website is the10kproject.com. If you go to the become a member tab, you'll be able to see the uh, membership packages down at the bottom of that become a member page and use these coupon codes if you are interested. Very good. We also want to make sure everybody knows about, this is absolutely free for you. It's a resource list. It's all about being financially free in five years. Uh, if you are currently a member and you want to get it, you can get it. If you are a future member and you want to get it, it is at no cost to you. And um, we're going to tie in tonight's conversation with this, but anybody is able to get this, you're able to share it with family and friends as well as our holiday gift to you. Uh, and it's something that's going to be ongoing. So the 10 kprojectcom forward slash forward slash freedom. If you want to get the resource list to figure out how you can become financially free in five years or less, even if you have little to no savings today. So with that, um, Tawana, what is the bet on black pitch for tomorrow night? Tomorrow, let's first talk about what a black, bet on black pitch is mm -hmm. for anybody that may be new. So one of the things that we do here at the 10K Project is once a week, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we bring a black founder to the investor community, a founder that is raising capital via equity crowdfunding, and we honor them, we highlight them, we listen to their presentation, um, if the investor community feels like that business is a good fit for their portfolio, then they invest. Um, but even more than that, and I know what, what could be more than investing in someone, sharing their campaign, that's what could be more than investing them. Um, what, 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 one of the challenges, the biggest challenges that Black founders face, obviously, is raising capital. But even those that are raising capital within the equity crowdfunding uh, industry, they have challenges with getting their campaign seen. And so as a community, we don't only consider investing in them, that's important, but we share the heck out of that campaign link, right? Because the more of the world that sees that presentation, the more opportunity they have to make a decision on their own if they wanna add that to their portfolio, right? And investing in a startup business could render favorable returns over time, I say could because investing is very risky, right? And so there are no guarantees. Um, but just think about if we were at the, the, the beginning uh, seat at the table for Uber or Lyft or Airbnb, all those other amazing companies that we hear about, right? Or if, if, we, if we were one of those people that got to invest in Amazon when they were still in the garage, right? Imagine what life could be like now. And our Black founders are doing amazing things like all of those companies I just mentioned and even more. And so they need our attention on their campaigns, right? So that we can determine if they're a good fit. So tomorrow's uh, Bet on Black Pitch founder is a founder that has come up with a solution to, I always give a teaser, I'm trying not to give too much of it, I know what I'm telling you. So you know how you search for images and you very rarely see someone that looks like us? They're changing that. And not just like look like us, but look like all people of color, right? Um, I, I tell a little funny story. I was searching, you know, scrolling through the internet and I saw an image that we use. And I was like, who stole our image? Because it's like an image that Cherie puts on copy often. And I was like, who stole our image? And when I giggled after I realized that's not your image, Tawana, that's some random guy that we found and it's probably 50 million companies using this guy's image. So what, how awesome would it be for people who are creating content to be able to have more than just a handful of black men, right? To choose copy from. Um, and so this, this founder is, is solving that issue. And he's, he's doing some other cool things, but he's solving that issue. Um, he's come up with a, a great solution to that. Um, and so he'll be joining us tomorrow. And I, I'm, I'm sure you guys will, you know, be very um, excited to hear his presentation. 
one of the things for anyone who's never been to a pitch before, one of the things that I always find the most amazing is that we walk away learning more about an industry that none of us or many of us didn't know anything about. And then I'm always equally amazed that there's always someone in the community that knows so much about it. I'm like, how, like, is this, was this a plant? Like, how do they know so much about the business? Because we, we have very diverse industries every week at something different, but every week there's someone in our community that knows something about it and not just something, but like a lot. Like they're asking like amazing questions that the rest of us are kind of like, wow, that's a good question. Um, so if you're not a member, please consider joining. Well, coming to the Bet on Black Pitches is a member benefit. So you do have to be a member to come to those. If you are a member and you haven't been able to make it live, we miss you. And we'd love for you to come back and join us live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. With that said, that was a mouthful. We want to get to David. We want to learn everything he, that he's doing. So, Cherie, I will turn it over to you to introduce us to Mr. Hobbs. Thank you so much. So, uh, David and I go back a few years now. He actually is a part of an organization that um, we, well, we both belong to the same organization of retired military officers uh, in the local D.C. area. And uh, David and I just, you know, we became fast friends and we're kind of like accountability partners at times. And I'm telling you, if you are, if you are somebody who knows how to network really well, like David is like the networkers networker. He like is tied into so many people and he's got an amazing um, portfolio that he has built he is a banker as well. Uh, he is also military. So, you know, thank you to all of our vets, including David Hobbs. And one day we were having a conversation and he said, you know, just randomly, yeah, I'm on the path to $20,000 a month in passive income. And anytime someone says something like that to me, I'm like, hmm, keep you close. <laughs> right? Figure out what kind of, ins you know, and, and he talked to me a little bit about, um, how he's doing it, what he's done thus far. And when I asked him if he would come and kind of share his story and his process, because oftentimes we talk to people when they're at the end of the process, but let's talk to somebody who's in the middle of that process. Um, so everybody, put an exclamation and point in the chat here for David Hobbs. Welcome. Thank you so much, Cherie. I really appreciate that. Um, just for starters, too, is, um, you know, I'm just a regular guy because a lot of times people look at folks, oh, they're investing in real estate. They have this portfolio and they think, you know, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that because, you know, they have lots of money and I don't really have that much, um, you know, for those who, who don't. And um, it's really simple because, you know, a lot of times it's just a matter of the little birdie whispering in your ear when you run across different opportunities. Um, just a little background. Um, I, my pop was in the Air Force. He was an Air Force uh, supply sergeant. Um, we traveled around a little bit. And, um, and then after college, I was in the Army uh, finance for a little while. And then um, after I got out, I migrated towards banking. And uh, actually about two years ago, I had a customer that came in that said, hey Dave, um, I have uh, 15 houses all paid for, and I'd like to get a line of credit on those houses. So long story short, I took the guy to lunch because I wanted to pick his brain because, you know, anyone that does something like that, you know, is really doing. And then the thing I really like about real estate is if you invest, uh, like, let's say my first unit I got was a $20,000 duplex. So I put $40,000 down. If, if you go the way that people tell you by putting um, $40,000 into the stock market, then that let's say that $40,000 earns 10%, and then now you have $44,000. That one particular unit is about $1,000 a month, and it makes um, $2,800, $1,400 for downstairs and $1,400 for upstairs. So that's... That's about a little over $20,000 a year versus $4,000. And then it was purchased at 195 and now it's 145. So, you know, these are the different things. Is that, that inverse? Do. It was purchased at 145 and now it's 195? 
I'm sorry, it was 195 and then it's now 225. Okay. Sorry, 245. So thank you for catching me on that. It's okay. Um, but so there's several ways that you can approach this. Uh, I'll just tell you the way I approach this particular one is um, these these units were going for about seventy five, eighty five thousand dollars. It's about an hour and a half outside of D.C. Because the mistake that a lot of folks make is they look at their metropolitan areas, assuming most of us are in a metropolitan area and they're looking around and you say, let's say your mortgage payment is. $1,500 and then maybe you're going to pay $1,700. I mean, you're going to get $1,700 for rent. So, you know, the Delta isn't really much because once they move out, once a wash machine breaks or you need one service call, then your profit is gone. So one of the things that you want to look for when you're figuring out, okay, what can I look for? Because the properties in my area aren't selling for $85,000, $95,000. So what you want to do is look for an area about an hour outside of a metropolitan area, hour, hour and a half outside of the area. And what you want to do also is look for an area that has a major industry like this particular town, Hagerstown, Maryland, has a big um, Amazon warehouse. So what you could do is Google Amazon warehouses. And those areas typically will have people that make about $30,000, $40,000 a year and those are perfect candidates to be tenants for your buildings. So if you see an Amazon warehouse, they've already done their due diligence. They know that they're gonna be paying 30, $40,000 a year. And um, so they know that there are gonna be a lot of um, people in that population that are gonna be interested in um, renting because the way real estate prices have gone up, 30, $40,000 people are, are not gonna be able to afford even a townhouse. Right. They can't buy these days, exactly. but they still, so many people want to rent a house house, especially if they have a family, you know, yep. versus an apartment. Yeah. That's really smart. Absolutely. So, you know, out in Hagerstown, they're building single family homes, but they're not building um, apartment buildings. They're not building townhouses. They're not building condos because they're not going to get the return on their investment. Unlike in a metropolitan area. So those are some of the things you want to look at. And also they have a um, um, a big, uh, what do you call it? Walmart. Look for the ginormous Walmarts. Because again, the, the Walmarts, the uh, Amazons, they do their due diligence. They know that if they build a Walmart, they build an Amazon fulfillment center, that there's going to be a number of people that are in the $30,000, $40,000 pay range because that's their market. So what you want to do is look around that area and then um, you can also go to HUD to find out what the prevailing rates are going to be. Because in the area that I'm renting apartments uh, out, they're renting for $800, $900, but HUD rents them for $1,400, $1,500. And HUD does When their you say HUD, analysis. do you mean Section 8 or? Se Section 8, but okay. they're also looking at what the market will bear. So... Section eight says 1500. And of course they got a little a bump in there because section eight tenants are less desirable. So you just roll that down a little bit, 1350, 1400, and then you'll be able to find folks that are gonna pay market 1350, 1400. And then meanwhile, your mortgage is gonna be about six, $700. So, and then what you wanna do for those of you who are not current home time, home, um, current home uh, owners, one of the things you want to do is if you're in a metropolitan area or if you're in a, a, a county on the outskirts of a metropolitan uh, of a city, look at the first time home buyers programs, because many times those are um, those are um, uh, they're they're like the rates that give incentives like this one county I was looking at, they give you twenty five thousand dollars towards the down payment um towards the down payment and closing costs and then you don't have to pay that money back until you sell and then also another county that i was looking at that i registered four years ago was um a one percent below market rate so if, like right now let's say the market's at six then you would buy the house for five percent so make sure you look at your county and then just go to the county website first time home buyer 
And then what you do typically is you'll sit, sit down for an all day workshop and they walk you through the home buying process. So that's one option. Then there's another option of just saving 5%. And if you don't have what it takes, maybe there's a family member that maybe there's a dear friend that will co-sign for you. Because what you want to do is like right now I'm working. So the money that I'm making for the units, I don't, I don't need to live off of. So what I'm doing is saving that money and accumulating it to, for another down payment. So right now the properties have gone from 75 up to about 125. So that means I need about $25,000 plus another five. So no, $30,000. No, is that right? Did I do the math right there? Um, 40, say, say, so say the math again. Let me hear it again. So 125,000 at 20%. Uh-huh. So that is um, 25. 25. 25,000. 25, so I was correct. Mm -hmm. So $25,000. And then you figure another five for closing costs. Mm -hmm. So if you accumulate $30,000, boom, you could buy another place. And if you're making about $700 on that unit, and then plus your uh, disposable income, put that towards buying a place. And if you're really adventurous and you know a lot of folks that want to invest, you can have them carry the model over like the, um, like Cherie is doing, where you have uh, like crowdfunding, where you agree to give them X percent back for um, investing in your, uh, your real estate. And then you could take that money and then pay them back with that. So very good. So let's let's summarize that because that was that was a lot, but that was a lot of great information. So it sounds like David, what you're doing is you're saving a lump sum. You've saved a lump sum in order to put a down payment on a multi um, a multi unit, right? Yes. And then you are renting out that multi unit. You're then taking the revenue received from that unit because you don't need it to live off of. You're then saving that to accumulate more money so that you can make a down payment on a new a new multi exactly. multi unit property. And so exactly. you will continue to rinse and repeat that until you have what? What's what's your goal? 20,000 a month after tax, after expense, after everything. I'm only at 10 right now. But um, you know, I'd really like to just keep on doing this and just roll the money in. Now, some people want to um, manage their, their own property. And for the first year I tried, it's a major, major headache. Some people have, some people are wired for it. Some people have the disposition for it. I don't. Um, and it took me a year to figure that out. Um, so, you know, you find out, you know, how you want to do it because the 10% to me, I look at it as an opportunity cost because the time you're spending doing that, you could have your own side business. You know, as Sheree mentioned, I work at a bank. And I had one young man come in today. He's uh, buying um, buying some uh, like uh, last year's version of the sunglasses, uh, the Ray Bans, and he's flipping them. He's buying them for about seventy five dollars, and he's selling them on uh, uh, eBay and Amazon for one fifty and above. So if you're saving that ten percent every month because you're too cheap, like I was the first year, then you know, look at the opportunity cost, all the time and effort that you're spending on the, on um, managing those units and the headache of managing the, the contractors for me was not worth it. And then there's the opportunity cost of taking that time and having another hustle that is going to have a higher ROI for you. So was the 10% the property management fee? Yes. Okay. Very yeah. good. So that's, that's you know, very, very important. Now, also with the real estate, um, me, I have a $5,000 rule. If, you, if I have to invest more than 5,000, you know, maybe replace a rug, do some painting, pull off the, um, pull off the paneling because it's an old building and then put on some new, new um, um, just fresh paint. That's, that's what I'm wired for. Some people are really handy, I'm not. And when you bash down a wall, which I did with this major rehab, I thought it was going to be 40,000. It turned out to be $120,000. You know, some people are very handy. I'm not. And like I said, it's about an hour and a half outside the city. So mm -hmm. I don't have a network out there. So 
um, you know, just keep that in mind. Now, talking about the word network, as Cherie mentioned, what you want to do is you can go on to, um, what is that, Facebook Marketplace, and then just Google in wholesalers, real estate. There's a lot of different groups out there. And then you'll get all these notices, and then you'll see um, you'll see some of the deals that are out there. But keep in mind, a lot of those are going to be, you know, 15, 20, maybe 50 or $100,000 worth of work. But then there's another option of um, contacting property managers. Because property managers, like right now, I have about three property managers that have their eye out for different landlords that just kind of throw their hands up in the air and say, I'm tired of these knuckleheads. I don't want to be dealing with renters anymore. I want to get out of this. So what you want to do, because there's two ways to prospect. One is direct, uh, where you can maybe put signs on people's door, put uh, signs in the ground, or then there's indirect and in building a network of tons and tons of advocates, tons and tons of friends that are going to be sending you business on the regular. So if you reach out to um, uh, contractors, big time contractors that do, you know, $50,000, $250,000 jobs, because those are ones that are going, and then there's um, wills and trust attorneys. Because with wills and trust mm -hmm. attorneys, there's someone that dies and so many people die without a will or a trust. Yeah. So it's a wonderful opportunity for them. They'll call you up and say, got one. You know, the kids can't uh, agree. One wants to uh, keep it and rent it. The other one wants to move into it. And the other sibling wants to uh, sell it. You know, so they can't, can't come to a meeting of the mind. Or divorce attorneys. It's another great place because they just want to get out. They don't want anything to do with their ex, soon-to-be ex-spouse. So if you build up these networks, and then also, too, you can call banks. And not so much now, but if you mark your calendar, maybe February, March into like June of next year, there's going to be a lot of foreclosures. So if you check with banks and find out which are some of them, which are some of the spoiled um, mortgages that they have, then maybe you can come in and take Let over. Let me that. just drop knowledge right there. Those last three points, if y'all didn't catch that and write that down. Wow. Yeah, listen I to the replay. I would never have thought to watch, to, to reach it out to attorneys and, and people who do well. I would never have thought that. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. so I want to go back to one thing that you said. And okay, so the inside joke, David, is that Tawana wants 10 doors. So we always tease Tawana about her getting her 10 doors because she's going to get them. Um, I'm going to get them. I don't just want them. <laughs> I'm going to get them. She's going to get her 10 doors. <laughs> But you casually said, I just have 10,000 right now. Let me say that that did not escape me. I hope it did not escape anybody in the chat here that he, he just casually just has 10,000 a month coming in now already, right? And that is an amazing accomplishment because so many people are at zero asking, how do I even get, you know, $500 coming in a month or a thousand. Yeah. So how do, to how do I begin to save the money to, for the to, down payment to, even, to begin with, right? Yes. We're all at different stages in that journey. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So why don't we start with that, Tawana? So David earns a nice living, right? Um, but, you know, we have people here who, who um, earn, you know, various uh, amounts on yeah, the spectrum. That's one of the things here at the 10K Project, right? Yes. We don't, we're, we're a community of people who are on the journey. Mm -hmm. We don't ask what part of the journey you're on, right? We just know we're all headed in the same direction. We're just at different points. So if you are at the point where you can't save a dime, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just barely paying your bills and making ends meet. Then the first step for somebody in that situation is to figure out how to get more disposable income, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe they start with the side hustle, right? right. Or they start with the second job, right? Or whatever it is that allows them to build up disposable income. Because when you, when you, you know, you think about a year's time, if you, if you took a second job, right? If that's what you had to do, that could be a very nice down payment for a startup piece of property, right? Maybe it's mm -hmm. just four doors. Maybe it's an apartment building with four doors or maybe it's a duplex, right? 
um, as long as it's it's multi units, you're still on the right track to being right. able to get it get revenue in. Right. Um, and I, I want to also add in, maybe you need to start with Freeman Capital. Maybe you need to start with somebody doing a deep dive on where you are, because you might be surprised at how much you're able to save or restructure your debt or things like that as well. Um, so, you know, uh, and we're not just talking about Freeman Capital because we promote it. We really actually do believe in that as well. So um, what are some of your thoughts, David? Because you, you're a commercial banker. You, you help people get SBA loans and other types of, of loans. You know a lot about business. What are some of your thoughts with regards to people starting side hustles, businesses, you know, leveling up their career, for example? Yeah. The, the thing around that is a lot of times, um, you know, we all have our own genius. The certain thing that um, we're really good at, like, you know, my my youngest son is um, he wasn't a very good student. As he just barely squeaked through even high school. Right. But in, in, instead of going to one of these, you know, big universities, um, he decided to start his own business. And he does video editing. So he, he does small, short commercials for social media. And, you know, he charges a monthly subscription for this. And so what you need, what we, all of us want to do is try to figure out where's my genius? What's something that other people have to struggle with that comes easy for me? And because a, a lot of times what people do is they try to think too hard. Um, like me, I'm a cheapskate, right? So one thing that... Um, you know, that I, I was doing before was buying stuff like a Goodwill, you know, goodwill.com, um, free, free stuff. Like you can get uh, refrigerators, stove on um, these different websites, uh, Craigslist and all those other ones. You can get a lot of free stuff. And then like this shirt I'm wearing is Goodwill, $4.99. These pants is part of a suit. It's a Donna Karan suit, but it's $14.99. And these shoes that I was wearing today are twelve dollars from Goodwill, you know. And so, hey, and my David, my wife, <laughs> my wife's car is a nineteen ninety nine Camry. You know, my car is uh, ten years old. You know, so it's just living below our means because a lot of times people get caught up in need and want. What do I really need? Do I really need this ginormous place? You know, like our, you know, where I live. It was built in the early 50s and it's never been renovated. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I like nice vacations and I'm trying to uh, accumulate a little nest egg. So one day I can have, you know, some, a nice life. And, and, you know, back to the 10,000, I didn't say the 10,000 just like that because I'm all that. I'm not. Because if I was, then you'd be talking to my people right now, you know, but <laughs> What, what I am, I'm a recovering small thinker because mm. all the time I've been thinking of how could I get an extra 500? How could I get an extra thousand? Because like, you know, I can go to golf courses I can get for free. I can get these country clubs and do, use their facilities for free. You know, all these places I can go, but that's like $100, maybe $500, $1,000 worth of savings. So about a year ago, actually January, I'm trying to recover from um, being a small thinker. And, and now I'm thinking of, you know, how can I get an extra 10 million? How can I get an extra 50 million? And so when I had that change in thinking, now I have two patents that I'm trying to help people to go to market with. I went to Green, um, Norway in uh, April, the State Department sent me for a go-to-market strategy. And now I'm ha helping a company to launch a seaweed company. And then, um, you know, I was just on the phone at three o'clock this afternoon, a guy in Morocco, he's working with a Moroccan Air Force um, for some anti-jamming patent and some uh, secured satellite communication. So, and then I mentioned all this because the mind is very powerful. If we think, how could I get an extra 50 bucks? You know what you're gonna get? 50 bucks. Bucks, that's it. But if you say, how can I get 500,000? How could I get an extra million? Let's say you only get 50,000 or 100,000. That's still not bad. 
So that's why I'm just trying to wrap my brain around thinking bigger because, and then the people I hang around with now are not my income level anymore. I'm hanging around with people that have a zero. They can put a zero on the end of what they make. I mean, uh, what I make, and still I don't make as much as they do. You know, now I have about three venture capitalists, one private equity, um, four millionaires. And it's just from changing your mindset. And, you know, I was just talking to my friend in Morocco this afternoon about this seaweed company. And he says, set up a call. I think I might want to invest in them. So when we have the conversation with regular people like me, I might say, hey, let's go watch the uh, Wizards game. You know, I got a free ticket. What is it, $80 seat? But then I talk to this other friend. He says, I can't use my suite at the, um, the Nationals Park because I'm running my kids around. I said, hey, hey, can I use it? Can I use it? So I was able to invite 14 people to the suite. You know? So it's just a matter of thinking bigger and telling ourselves that we're worth it. I am worth it. You know, if I, I want to be the, 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 uh, the dumpy looking house in a really affluent neighborhood. And people are looking at that house, my house, and saying, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> but those people, when they pick up the phone, stuff happens. So it's a matter of if you change your mindset, it's amazing. You say, yep, yeah, I'm broke today. But watch. December 12th, 2023. I'm going to be, I'm going to have blank. And it's important that we know what blank is. You know, like my son that just started, uh, he graduated in June from high school. I gave him a goal of $50,000 next year. He's like, 50,000? How can I get 50,000? I said, well, you just had a $1,500 um, customer last week. And he's going to be paying you $400 a month. So, you know, it, it's just a matter of setting our goal. Because, you know, some people say, oh, one day. And I like to ask, when is one day? You say you're going to start a side hustle. When is one day? Maybe January 1st, you say, I'm going to start a business plan. Because if you go to the score.org website, you could find a mentor on there that does the field that you want to work in. And they'll mentor you to help you to grow your business, whatever your business is, because you'll look nationally and you'll find someone that does what you're thinking about doing. That score.org is a friggin' gold mine. And then just think of whatever number you were thinking of, of earning next year, put a zero behind it. And it'll happen. You that's said called so a stretch goal. Things. This is great. Yeah, that's yes. a good stretch goal. Chris has a question. Chris says, on a well-kept 12-unit building, what would be a safe amount to have set aside for emergencies for that kind of property? Or what way can I calculate that amount? Yeah. Um, with the, the most expensive item usually is going to be the roof. So my rule of thumb is, what is it going to cost to replace the roof? And that's the amount. Because that's going to be, once you've got the roof covered, then everything else should be covered. Mm -hmm. Um, and then plus, if you are an hour outside of a city, a metropolitan area in the area, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, they typically, I mean, they're okay with a used refrigerator, a used stove. And then like my paneling, I don't even pull the panel off the wall. I just paint the paneling. You know, the, the air conditioner gets broken. I pull the one out of the window and put another one in. And you can get all those used. So typically those apartment buildings, um, oh, and when you're looking at the apartment buildings, you wanna find ones that are below market. Like let's say the market will bear $1,200 for those apartments and you see they're priced at 800. That's one you wanna get and slowly move, move the market up to 1200. And then starting out, if you want um, to build up capital because you used all your capital to buy that building, after about three, four years, you could take that building and then buy another. I, I mean, you could take that, that capital because when you buy, when you have a regular mortgage, you buy a place based on your income. When you buy a unit, five units and above, 
then they look at the revenue that the property is generating. So if you use that model, you find one that's under underpriced, and then you look at the delta, and then now that's the new calculation. So if you went from 800 to 1200, it just went up 50%. So whatever you bought it for, plus the natural appreciation, you could get a big chunk of money and then roll that into something else. I love so something, it. Something you said, David, where, where I know I'm gonna get in trouble. You said you just wanna paint the paneling. My issue is gonna be, I don't wanna paint the paneling, right? I don't wanna walk in the room with the paneling. I don't wanna paint the paneling. But how do people stay focused, right? On the goal and not go in there and do the most unnecessarily? Yeah, just like with growing our, um, like our careers, if you have a business, whatever you do, you always want a mentor. Because that one guy that came into my office that had 15 units that he didn't have any balances on, he was my mentor. I didn't do anything without talking to him first. Because I, I was thinking, oh, I can make the place really nice, put some vents in, have central air, central heat. He said, no, not for that market. They don't care. Rip that, um, rip that air conditioner out, spend 150 bucks, put another air conditioner in there. Oh, the heat isn't working right because these have the, the old iron radiators. Radiator isn't working anymore. Put some floorboard heating in there. Okay. This, yeah. this That's is good advice. a call That's for like advice. mentoring. Um, and for everybody, uh, some of you may know we're in the midst of our student housing masterclass and we just had our second session with the general contractor, uh, shout out to Kim. And, you know, we were talking about that as well. We were talking about the excessive rehabbing and renovations and things like that. And um, how a mentor can help save you money as well as save you time, as well as give you um, better expectations of a contractor says it's going to take three months, but she's a general contractor that knows it's really going to take five months for that to, um, you know, that rehab to be complete, et cetera. And it sounds like you were saying basically the same thing, David. Um, yes. Yeah. It's like an accountability partner almost, right? That person yep. to say, you, you, it, you don't need to do that, that, that fancy of work. And to, yeah. to David's point, there are, there are people that are okay with the window unit, right? They don't need central air or central heat. The, the window unit works just fine. So having somebody keep you on task. Okay, I, I'm I'm in the market for an accountability partner. Well, I think you I think you want a mentor, and not an accountability partner. Because for me, accountability partner means that's your peer. A mentor is somebody who already mm -hmm. owns 20, 30 that's a units. Good, that's a good point. Yeah, who could tell you, don't waste your money with that. <laughs> like they've already point. had all the bumps and bruises, you know. Yeah. And I'm going to say something else as well. That your mentors, but don't be cheap with your mentors. If you need to pay that mentor. It's the cost of doing business. That mentor could save you thousands of dollars per year. You know, if they want $200 for you to have an hour long lunch with them, I'm of the mindset, pay them. I'd rather pay $200 than lose 10,000 because I didn't right. want to pay somebody yeah. to give me advice not to strip something out and put in central air <laughs> you know? and it's not needed. So um the other thing that, that David had mentioned is, you know, different resources. So there's SCORE out there. There are a lot of different resources that you uh, want to tap into with regards to uh, starting your business, starting a side hustle, things like that. I know when I started writing business plans, what I did, and this may help some people, is I started working under a business plan writer who had um, 30 years of experience writing business plans. And for the first year that I was in business, we would go to, um, to client meetings together. I would learn how he closed. I would work with him on the projects, things like that. And because of that, I didn't have the trial by fire that, that some people have as you're just getting into business. So again, just some things to think about um, so that you're not starting off from zero. If you're able to attach yourself to somebody who's been in business many years, that is always very helpful. One final thing, my YouTube people, 
Um, we've got 15 people watching, seven likes. So if you can um, like the video, so that way the algorithms can bless us, I would really, really appreciate that. Like and share. Um, like and share as well. I want to go into something because you had mentioned, you know, you say, for example, um, another $30,000 in order to get your next, um, uh, your next piece of property. Duplex, mm -hmm. And when I did the calculations for $700 a month, that's like a little over four years <laughs> in order to save that much money. And some people may look at that and say, I don't want to wait that long. I want to use the BRRRR strategy. So the BRRRR strategy for anyone who uh, does not know, it stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. So basically what happens is you buy a property, you rehab it, you rent it out and you refinance it. You basically leverage it like a lot, in my opinion. And then you go out and buy another property. And it's something that a lot of people are using as a strategy. I have a thought process around that, but coming from a banker, coming from you, what do you think about that? Because some people may respond like, I don't want to wait four years to save $30,000. I'm going to do the birth strategy. Yeah. What some people do is, um, you know, while you're thinking outside the box is um, people are familiar with um, Airbnb. And what some people do is they'll rent an apartment. You know, you get the permission from the landlord to use the property as Airbnb to rent it out. So you don't have the money to buy a place, but you got the money to pay a down payment. And then you rent the place uh, and then you'll uh, do the Airbnb model and then you'll get several of those units. So that's a, a nice way to have a side hustle, but start to build up revenue from that. Because if you find an area that's, that's good and you won't want to get rid of that rental, even when you do buy a, a place, you just take that money and then um, put it in a pile. And then when you have enough, then you could buy a place, but you can continue taking that, um, that rental arbitrage and just putting that money back in. You rent, you're renting it for 1500, but you're making 3000 and just keep on renting it out that way. And so that's a way that you don't have to wait till you get the 30,000, but you can just take the, d the deposit in the first month's rent and then start making, and of course you have to um, furnish the property as well. And then there's also, um, for those who have the appetite for it, with assisted living because the there's a shortage of places for seniors to live in. So um, if you could find a unit that's gonna be all on the first floor that's wheel wheelchair accessible, there's, I mean, I hear of, of people getting one, two, if not $3,000 a month per person that's gonna be living in there. You can go to your hospital, your local hospital to try to find out um, you know, what the need is there. Cause those could be the ones that could be furnishing you people. And then there's the, the drug rehab. And a lot of people would not have the appetite for it. Um, and then the, or the people that are just getting out of um, rehab and they need uh, like a halfway house. And those are very lucrative as well. If you have the appetite for that. And when you talk about the assisted living in the, in the drug rehab, that's a perfect opportunity to take advantage of some grants as well because you're doing something for the community. So, so, so those may, may very well be very good solutions. The other thing that we don't wanna lose sight of is the art of group economics, right? You may not have 40,000, but I may have 10, Cherie got 10, David has 10, now we got 40, right? And so if you are willing, right, to take on business partners, um, because it is a business, right? Even, even if they are family members, you need to legitimize the business. Um, and then you buy, you know, you put the down payment down, you buy a piece of property together. That gets you there in a short amount of time. You don't have to wait the four years that it would take for you to, to, to get the 40,000 by yourself. So that's something to consider as well. And for those who are really aggressive, you know, there's a um, borrowing the money from their 401k. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which just check your option. laws. Yeah, talk with your um, your accountant. Just make sure that you're doing it in a way where you won't have a tax uh, implication. So definitely. Um, 
So I happen to know that you are not just looking at real estate in order to get this $20,000 a month. You're also considering buying businesses, which Tawana has bought a business, several other people in. Actually, Tawana is on business number 11 already. What? In a year. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. Yes, ma Tawana has been doing some work. Tawana has been doing <laughs> yeah. a lot of work. So I didn't know that. I knew that you had a couple, but we haven't spoken about the others that you have. Um, but, you know, I wanted to, to talk with the family about not just thinking about real estate, but also thinking about other types of um, ways to bring in cash flow to help diversify, um, you know, our, our passive income. So talk to us a little bit, David, about, you know, anything you have with regards to that. You don't have to tell us what you're working on now, but I know some of the things you were working on that had fallen out, fallen through, or, you know, things like that, just so that people can get some ideas of how uh, they're able to purchase businesses in order to get the cash flow as well. Well, one nice thing is, um, you know, I think I talked earlier about everyone's, everyone has their genius. Um, the one thing that a lot of technical people have, like, let's say, engineers, chemists, uh, just different people that are inventors, they're very good. Like the, um, the one guy that has the, the cooling tower cleaning solution, where he, he, they, they, it automatically, from a chemical perspective, it, it cleans the water so you don't have to put chemicals in there. He's been sitting on this for about 12 years, this invention that he had, has, and he's not going to market with it because he says, I don't know how. So, you know, I'm helping him to go to market with that. And then the seaweed company in Norway, these guys are very, they're all different kinds of engineers and um, they understand fish and um, seaweed and all that kind of stuff, but they don't know how to go to market. So you find an area that you're pretty good in and then you say, all right, who's the people that would need this? Who's the people that would, you know, want, want these services? And then, um, you know, like I mentioned with the, the secured satellite communication, outside of the United States, there's a lot of places, like I'm looking at Africa, there's a lot of places that um, want to communicate. They don't have ways to communicate. So that's what we're providing as a way for them to communicate. So when you're looking at the world and you're seeing problems and you hear someone, hey doc, every time I raise my arm like this, it hurts, it hurts my shoulder. When you hear people saying the same thing over and over where there's something that's inconveniencing them, a lot of times that could be an opportunity. And a lot of times you just have to observe and figure that this is something that, um, you know, it, that, that this is a solution that I could bring to the table. So that's what you do is listen and think of what kind of solution I could bring to the table. Yeah, and it goes back to what you were saying with regards to um, if you say, you know what? Every year I want to buy a house. I know I'm going to need $30,000 in order to purchase. How can I make $30,000 extra per year? And just take a step back and, and let the ideas kind of flow to you with regards to that. And the truth is, if I, would, if I were to want to make $30,000, I probably would aim for sixty. dollars that way I could have some tax money in there, a little bit of marketing money, money you know, and money to kind of bring into the, the house as well um, so that I could, you know, do my investing. Um, but yeah, you know, you have a lot of, again, this goes to your networking as well. Uh, you, you know, talk to different people uh, in order to find out what they're working on. You also happen to be a banker. So people come to you, you know, for money and things like that. What are some of your suggestions for people who um, are new to networking, who are new to kind of getting into uh, getting to know people with regards to investing? Well, I mean, for starters, because um, there's, two ways to build your business. One is to figure out, you know, how can I catch a fish? So you catch a fish and you eat for a meal, or you can make friends with a fisherman, a fisherwoman, you know, it could be a CPA, it could be attorney, you know, you know, the different industries that would be able to feed you business. So that's what you want to do is build a network of people that you're giving to, and then they're giving to. 
Because the one thing, too, that I call the avatar connection, which I think is so critical in networking, and that is like when you meet someone, you're thinking, how could I add value to this person's world? And so for those of you who've seen the movie Avatar, they have everyone has like a ponytail. And then the horse has a ponytail. And what you want to do is connect the two. And then now you're in sync with each other. Then you mount the horse and then you ride off into battle. And the mistake a lot of people do is they'll see a horse and then they'll run and jump on it. And then people will, the horse will look up and say, who are you and what are you doing on my back? Because we didn't connect. So what I try to do is every person that I meet, it could be at a barbecue, it could be at a happy hour. I'm thinking, what can I do for this person? And as they're talking, I'm like, oh, you need to meet so-and-so and find out because whenever you meet someone, you always want to come with a gift. What can I do for this person? And it has to come from the heart. It shouldn't be, oh, this guy's an influencer, so he's going to owe me. No, that's not the way it works. The universe is looking for something that comes from the heart. So you figure, how can I help this person? And a lot of times, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be work. This one guy that gave me the, the tickets to his suite I connected him with a, um, a fitness trainer that was, uh, he's a contractor with the Jamaican track team to make kids run faster. So I connected his, his son is in football. So, you know, he felt, you know, really comfortable giving me those tickets to his suite. So you always want to come with a gift and try to listen to people and not just think, okay, they're, they're a banker. So bankers know people that I want to get in front of. Hey, Dave, if you ever run into so-and-so that does such and such, introduce them to me. Why would I want to do that? You know, because if you're sticking your hand in my pocket while I'm looking, what are you going to do when I turn my back? You know, and, um, and then plus another thing too is people are always telling us who they are. If they use the words, I, me, mine, I did this, I did that, then run. Because that isn't a person that you that you really want to partner with. Listen to people's words when you're trying to figure out how to make alliances. Like um, Cherie mentioned that I'm with I'm with the retired military officers. So we're with the military officer association. That's the only networking I do. The only networking that I do to build the book, the the Rolodex, is meeting one on one with people. And then you realize people like Cherie is always in front of new people, always building her book and network and being around people that are going places. So someone like Cherie, we need to have a regular, either monthly or bi-monthly call that you set up all the time. So when you make that call, you say every month, what's today, the 12th, the 12th of January, 12th of February, every month on the 12th, we're going to get together and we're going to talk. And then you have a, a homework assignment, depending on how comfortable you feel, saying, let's try to have one referral for each other at next, next month's meeting. And then you'll kind of be, you'll kind of calibrate the radar to try to figure out, you know, how can I bring a referral to Cherie? So it's, it's just a matter of always be, um, I don't know, you just want to figure out how can I help this person? How can I help this person? And then the universe will figure out a way for you to help that person. And then the way the CPA in the sky works, you accumulate a lot of credits, you'll get blessings. And people call it luck, but it's not luck. Yeah. And I will say something. I belonged to a group years ago called BNI, Business Network International. It's It was the largest referral network in the world. I don't know if it still is, but I was the president of my chapter uh, ended up being the fastest growing chapter in the region at the time, which was very interesting because we were the red headed stepchild of chapters. And we actually, you know, were able to do this. But I noticed something when I was the president of that chapter. I noticed that there would be people who would be really, really great at giving referrals. There would be other people who would be really, really great at giving like contracts to people within the organization. There would be other people who would be really, really great at, um, you know, doing other things for people. 
you ne- you never get exactly, you never get everything from one specific person. You're going to get blessings from different people at different times that you need them. The other thing that I noticed, um, B and I would want to do a one for one with people. If I give Tawana a referral, she gives me a referral. If I, if I give David a contract for 5,000, he gives me a contract for 5,000. And as I looked at the community that we had, I noticed it didn't work that way. I noticed that I might give Tawana a referral and Tawana might give David uh, a contract. And then David might give Raymond, you know, an introduction to some big wig at the Pentagon, et cetera. But I would always get my blessing from somebody else. If I expected my return on investment from Tawana, that never won. So when other people started asking me, you know, as president, how did you do this? How did you make it work? I said, you need to let people in your organization know that the person that they give to may not be the person that they get from. And that Mm -hmm. needs to be okay. But you will get, you will get something in return. It just may not be from the person that you sewed into. Yeah. Just to piggyback on that. Sometimes Um, If you see someone that's always getting, 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 um, you're always given to a certain person and they're Mm -hmm. always taking, 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 but they're never given to anyone, then you want to find another another partner. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Because they should be giving to somebody. But what if I give to Tawana, she may not be able to give to me. But I'm giving to someone else. But you're giving to somebody else. Exactly. So it ends up. And what you're sewing into is the process of that, right? You didn't mm-hmm. sew into Tawana specifically, you sewed into the process. Mm-hmm. And if we continue to pay that forward, it, the, the, way, yeah. the way energy and life works, is it's, it's going to come right back to you. Things come back. Exactly. Yeah. And always look out for the, um, the influencer in the room. Because there's every room you go into, whenever you're at a networking event, there's someone that's the influencer. Mm-hmm. And that's a person that you want to get cozy with. That's the person you want to add value to their world. And I just had a guy recently, um, uh, a gal, uh, my uh, business banking partner, introduced me to this guy in the, uh, in the local chamber, and he's the, the big time influencer. So we we had a couple meetings, and he's made three introductions of people um, that he wants me to get in front of. And um, you know, so it's it's just always look who's the influencer, who's the influencer, and also listen to people's words. Mm-hmm. because people are sometimes they they're asking for help but they're not really asking for help but they're just kind of making a comment this one buddy of mine was talking about secured satellite communication and i said well what are you doing to get another customer you got one you've been working on for four years where are your other ones when well, i don't have any i said well let me see if i could find one for you because people are always telling you they want stuff they want stuff they're not really saying they want it Mm -hmm. But they're just kind of venting like this other guy with the um, anti-jamming patent. It's been sitting on the shelf for six years. He said, oh, some people are, are, three companies are using our patent and we're not getting anything for it. And I said, let me make some calls. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got set up with the uh, Moroccan Air Force. And then now we're working with a drone company to put the anti-jamming device on there so no one could jam their drone signals. It's amazing. Yeah. So just, you know, yeah. listen, people are always crying out for help. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you made the comment about the influencers because there are probably about six or seven people in my network that I know if I ever need anything, I go to these six or seven people and one of them is bound to know the person that I need. So I don't feel like I need to know everybody. Mm-hmm. I just need yep. to know those six people and to keep yep. them close. And that's, that's like all I concentrate on as well as, you know, just being a good person and, and doing general networking. So for some of you, it's, you know, there are some people who are really great at keeping hundreds of people or thousands of people, you know, uh, in business rotation, right? But if that's not you, just focus on, on your four or five or six people that if you just stay close with them, then you can get to whomever else that you need when you need them. Yeah. And you don't necessarily need to schedule the call because a lot of people say, 
Oh, Tawana, it's been a while since we last talked. Let's schedule some. No, he just called. Hey, mm -hmm. Tawana, what's up? What's new in your world? And you're going to talk. Hey, you know, I got this um, Zoom call in about three minutes. I just have three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll catch up real quick. Mm -hmm. And then if there's something that's really hot that you say or that I say, you're like, oh, I want to hear more about that. I don't up. have time to talk now. What's your schedule look like? But don't don't schedule. Just call. Just call. Yeah. Just call. Yeah. Yeah. I have about so, 45 to 55 yeah. calls a day that I make. I, look, this David is plugged in. <laughs> That's all I have to say. David is plugged in. Oh, he's fun. he's one of my it's plugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so as we're wrapping up here, first of all, Tawana, did you have additional questions for uh, David? As you're no, getting your no, 10 we, doors. We got some really good tips here this evening. One of the things, not, not a question, but de definitely got some insight. One of the things that I took away from this discussion, in addition to all of the tips, was I've been looking at my journey to getting my 10 doors. I won't say wrong, because that's not the right word, but not as clearly. Mm -hmm. So I love the way David has simplified I need $40,000 for a down payment, mm -hmm. right? I'm looking at these properties and I'm looking at, okay, one is 865, one is, you know, one is 2.1 million. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have been getting a little, okay, let me just- Hyperventilating. On, let me just focus on buying the businesses, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the multi units are gonna come. So I've been kind of pushing it to the side because it's like overwhelming when you look at it like that. But I do need to start looking at it as, it's forty thousand dollars down. That I can manage. That mm. I can, I can, I can, I can palate that right. That that's that's palatable. And so, um, that that's a good takeaway that I got from tonight. In addition to all of the other tips, calling the 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 the, the will and the probate attorney, calling mm. the divorce attorney, like making those connections, like all of that. That was a straight fire. Those were that was a straight fire tip mm -hmm. that I would never have thought about. Um, but but just really taking bite sizes, right? And I always say it. So it's interesting. You always say that when you give advice to other people, but sometimes taking your, remembering your own advice is difficult, but really managing bite sizes versus like all of it at once. And so um, starting um, the first of the year, when I start looking again, um, my, real estate, my real estate agent will probably like me a lot more because she's been sending me stuff and I've been like, God, that's too, you know, without even thinking about the down payment, like I have not even thought about the down payment. I just thought about that's too high, or it's got panelists, or, or it's got a you know, unit. So David, I have tons of way, so you just get panelists. So maybe I need to look at this thing a little differently. I am not living there, and there isn't there is a, a market of people who would be grateful for that window unit, and I have to remember that. Yeah. when I'm looking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my favorite comment of the evening is I am a recovering small thinker. I wrote it down, Sheree. That's going to be my, that's going to be my, my post in the morning. Yes. To the community. That, yes. that is, that was powerful. Yes. Yes. So, you know, and, um, I, I definitely want to encourage people. We have what another, 18 or so days between now and the end of the year, the end of the year, first of all, is not here yet. There may have been something that you wanted to do January, 2022, you wrote it down on your goal list that you could still complete. And I'm encouraging people to, if there's something that you want to do and you can complete it during this time, take advantage of that. If you want to, you know, say, hey, you know what, next year I'm going to save $30,000 so I can get into a property or whatever, take this time to brainstorm. And I can't say this enough. David was great tonight. Definitely re-listen to this. We've had several other people come to the 10K project. You can also do your own interviews of just talking to people who are currently doing it because you'll get more ideas. And I do want to encourage people to think about working underneath a real mentor, somebody who has done it before you, who can kind of, you know, answer your questions and kind of have you feel a little bit more at ease and things like that. Um, because 
we all, you know, are in this together. We're all wealth builders around here. So David, I'm going to leave you with the final words. Real quick was um, like, for those of us with children, if you make a commitment to your children, mama's going to do this, papa's going to do this, they're going to hold you accountable and you're going to want to save face. So you're going to make sure you do it. And that's what I used to do when I used to do something that I wasn't quite sure if I was really going to follow through. You tell your kids, Mm -hmm. they're going to hold it over your head. So you know you're going to have to do it. So, you know, Sheree, when you're talking to Wanda, you're talking about goals. You share your goals with your children. They're going to make you, uh, Mm -hmm. if you want to save face with them, you know, because now you're telling them to do all these other things and you didn't do what you said you were going to do, then you you lost street cred with them. So if your goal, if you really are committed to your goals, tell your kids. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love that. that. Yeah. So everybody, um, our report, Get Financially Free in Five Years, is out, the10kproject.com forward slash freedom. This is all about how we can buy cash flow uh, because the new way of retiring is going to be buying cash flow and having enough cash flow where you can retire. And retire doesn't mean you sit in your rocking chair and do nothing. It just means that you have freedom to do the things that you want to do without worrying about, oh my goodness, if I don't go and clock in tomorrow, you know, I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills. And all of us want to be able to do that. So uh, Tawana says we could do it in five years. That's what we're working on. (laughs) So originally, originally the document was 10 years and I challenged Sheree to change it to five. Mm -hmm. Some of us are old. We, 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 you know, some of us took a long time to get to this mindset shift and we need to cut that thing in half. And so we think we put together some information that really will allow you to be successful in five years, but you got to get your head right, right? You, you can't go head, right? without the right mindset. David talked about that. Yeah. The right mindset and the determination and the ability to um, keep, you know, keep with it, right? Mm-hmm. This is not an overnight, right? Building wealth is not going to be done overnight. The odds that any of us will be lottery ticket winners, very slim, right? Mm-hmm. So we've got to put our mind to it. We've got to stick to it um, and be clear about what it is you're trying to do, right? They, I love that David said, what's your genius, right? What's that thing that you do better than anyone else, mm-hmm. right? So often we're chasing somebody else's dream mm-hmm. and you don't tap into that thing that really fires you up, right? And so, you know, we, we hope that when you come here to the 10K Project, that we're showing you enough diversity and variety in how to build wealth, that you find your thing. Um, I found my thing here, right? The buying the businesses, that's my thing. Um, And so I I only hope and pray that you find your thing here in this community, because that's the goal. We're bringing a, a wealth of knowledge to you, bring amazing people like David, who are everyday people. We have not worked. Very few celebrities have come here, right? I think we've done some celebrity from an NFT uh, blockchain crypto standpoint, but very few celebrities come here. We are bringing everyday people to talk to us as everyday people. And we do that on purpose because we want you to know this thing is attainable, right? This is not a rabbit out of a hat. This is attainable. And people that look like you and I, people that make the money you and I make, People that live the life you and I live are doing this every day. And so if they can do it and we bring them, bring them here to give us their blueprint. And, and, and one thing that you'll learn is our community, they're so welcoming and they want to share. David came here to share, right? Without any compensation, right? This conversation tonight is a thank you. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but he did that willingly because that's the kind of community 10K Project is, and that's who we surround ourselves with, people who want to see you win without even knowing your name. And so we hope that you find your thing. If you don't find it in these last 18 days of the year, the good news is we'll be back, right? <laughs> and, and we've got a full schedule. We, we mm-hmm. got, I've got a list of people I want to invite. And so we'll be back. And, and next year, we'll show you some more people that we haven't seen before. We'll bring back some of our favorites that we Mm -hmm. saw from previous years. 
but stick with us. Your thing is here and it's waiting for you. And so don't give up on yourself. Believe in yourself. This wealth building journey is yours to succeed in. Absolutely. So thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate you so very much. Everybody, again, put a one in the chat to thank David for being here with us tonight. Put a one in the chat to thank David for being here so he can see the ones coming through saying he's so inspirational. Again, the report is the10kproject.com forward slash freedom, the10kproject.com forward slash freedom. I believe that all of us can do it. And uh, David, I know you're not seeing YouTube here, but the ones are even coming up on YouTube. Everyone is saying you did a fabulous job and really it is, you are an inspiration. And I'm glad that you um, were willing to come and share your story because a lot of black people do not like to share their successes for various reasons. And, you know, anytime we have a regular person who, you know, is just here to share their story and say, I'm doing it. You can do it too. Here are some ways for you to think about doing it. We're always grateful for that. So next week will be our last session. Next Monday will be our last session for 2022. Tomorrow night is the bet on black pitch at 8 PM Eastern time. And other than that, um, and, and Wednesday night, we are having our third session for the student housing masterclass all about raising money and getting uh, funding for your properties. So um, thank you very much, Dave, for being here. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Alana. <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. Have Night, a good everybody. rest of your week as well.